So good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Normandy Park United Church of Christ, wherever you are on life's journey. You are most welcome here. As we uh, prepare for worship this morning, we acknowledge that we are on the unceded land of the Duwamish and the Muckleshoot, a people that are still here, a people who revere the sacredness of this land. May we give thanks and gratitude for our ability to have our church on this land next to the Salish Sea. Please join me in the words of gathering. I'll read the light print and we'll read the bold together. People of God, we gather in worship to remember to whom we belong. We belong to the God who rescues enslaved peoples. We belong to the one who saves through grace and forgiveness and still more grace. We belong to the God of our sacred stories. We belong to the one who shares a holy meal who helps us share what we have. Holy God, beloved Jesus, untamed spirit, join us in this space.
Let us pray. Generous God, we are seekers, we are followers, we are believers and doubters, all gathered here to soak up your word. Through covenant and story, you call us again and again to show up, to listen, to be kind, to stand in solidarity with those who are hurting, to accompany the sick, to feed people and be fed. As we begin this season of generosity, may the nourishment that comes most fully from our breaking bread together inspire us to lean into God's love and God's right action. Amen. <laughs> so we're not having a choir anthem this morning. So we'll just jump right into the um, intergenerational moment and uh, Matthias has perfect timing, you know. <laughs> Showing up right now. <laughs> so I don't know if um, Matthias wants to come up here, Susan, or not. He's welcome to join me today if he wants to. Yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> Hi there. I'm going to tell a story, and well, maybe this might be a little hard for people at home on Zoom, but I'm going to sit down with you. Yeah. Yeah, there's the candles, and we got some fish up there today. Do you see that? So um, this might be, oh, well, maybe grandma can come up here too. <laughs> no. All right. Um, so I'm sorry if people can't see me on Zoom as well. We'll just let Matthias run around. Um, so today we're back in the gospel of John and it's a post-resurrection story for our preaching. And I thought I would situate us a little bit in um, what just happens in, in the Gospel of John in chapter 21. It's a post-resurrection Jesus that we're going to meet today. And so I want to kind of remind us of how we got to a post-resurrection Jesus. And so we're going to pretend Matthias is sitting here as we do this. I don't know, Susan, you want to stay here? You want to go back? <laughs> All right, I'm going to stand up. So sorry for you at home on Zoom with the camera angle. So this is from Desmond Tutu's um, book, Children of God, a storybook Bible, which I really, really love. Um, so we're looking at the post-resurrection Jesus. Two days after Jesus died, what happened? Mary and several other women went to the tomb where he had been buried. They were shocked to see that the stone had, that had covered the opening had been rolled away. They looked inside and Jesus' body was gone. Two angels in dazzling clothes said, who, why are you looking for Jesus here? Jesus is alive. Go tell the others. The women rushed to tell the disciples. At first, no one believed them. And we remember it was Mary Magdalene that nobody believed. A little while later, so that was the first resurrection appearance. A little while later, disciples gathered to talk about what had happened. Suddenly, Jesus stood right in front of them. Peace be with you, Jesus said. The disciples were so frightened. They clutched each other and trembled. But Jesus said, don't be afraid. It's me. Look at my hands and my feet. Touch me. But they could not believe that Jesus was alive. Give me a piece of fish, said Jesus. You know, fish back here. Um, he took the fish and he ate it. And his followers were convinced Jesus really was alive and back with them again. They were so happy. They laughed and clapped their hands in joy. So here's a picture here at first with the angels and then with Jesus coming in and saying hello to everyone. And doubting Thomas, you know, was in the mix. <laughs> so we'll do a short little prayer. Dear God, help me to see that Jesus lives. And we will do the Lord's Prayer next together. Let us pray. Our creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
So I don't know if we have any young people that want to go off to Sunday school today or not, but we do have teachers here if you're interested. So um, I'll let you guys all figure it out <laughs> while we do the prayer of reconciliation. Please join me in the prayer of reconciliation. God of generosity and liberation, when we forget to give you thanks and praise, please forgive us. When we forget your good creation and all that you have provided for us, please forgive us. When we forget our sacred stories of how the captives were set free, how the seas parted for the people of Israel, please forgive us. When we forget that the resurrected Jesus showed up for his friends and remained with them and is now here with us through the power of the Holy Spirit, please forgive us. When we turn away from your goodness, seeking instead instant gratification and quick fixes, please forgive us. Please hear the words of assurance. The good news is that Jesus will always invite us to join him, to dine with him, to walk with him, to celebrate this good earth with him. Friends, you are already forgiven. Carry this forgiveness with you in all that you say and do. Today's reading is from Psalm 66, verses 1 through 9. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great power, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you. They sing praises to you and sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds among mortals. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There we rejoiced in him who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let the rebellious not exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. And from John chapter 21, verses 1 through 14, and uh, today I chose the New International Version. Afterward, 
Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. But I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he'd taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this Sunday, as we officially kick off our stewardship season and our theme of from bread and cup to faith and giving, um, let us first give a shout out to everyone that works so hard to set up for the rummage sale, to organize everything for the rummage sale, to price everything, to be here for the two days and to clean up. All that took so much hard work. So I just want to give a million thank yous to everyone. We can do our, our sign for applause <laughs> here in the room and home on Zoom. It's like, really, it was quite an undertaking and it takes a whole community, a whole village to make it work. During our time, talent, and treasure, actually, we're going to do it before time, talent, for today, before joys and concerns today. Nancy is going to share with us, um, Nancy K, that is, a total for the sale and where the proceeds are going to go. To orient us to the scripture today, we are meeting up with the disciples in a post resurrection scenario as we looked at in the intergenerational moment, the third time that Jesus shows up in the Gospel of John. This is after the Last Supper, after the death and resurrection of Jesus, and after those two other appearances that he had, that one in the garden with Mary Magdalene and the other one with his disciples, especially Thomas. In this gospel, it seems that the disciples, despite the resurrection appearances, are not sure what they're going to do next, what's going to happen next. It's not clear that they will build a house church movement or that the gospel will be written down or that it will be shared throughout the earth. What is apparent is that they have a need to do something and a need to eat. So Simon Peter says, I'm going fishing. How many of you, when faced with a situation that seemingly has no answers and maybe no way forward exactly in that moment, do you do your own vision of going fishing. Perhaps it means actually showing up to work yet again, even though the problems are too big. Maybe it really does mean cutting out and going fishing. Maybe it means plopping yourself in your garden to do some harvesting of the last of the summer tomatoes and raking some leaves. 
Maybe it means tinkering in your shop. Maybe it means hopping into the car and going for a drive or taking a hike in the woods. Whatever our version of going fishing is, we know we've all been there. We know that there are times when life is just too much and it's just easier to, to return to the things that we know how to do. Lucky for Simon Peter, his friends join him. He's not alone in his fishing pursuits. Sure, Je Jesus is missing and well, Judas isn't there of course. Those that remain get back in the boat and they cast their nets. As the story goes, though, they catch nothing, no fish, no fish in their nets, not a one. I imagine them in the night drifting on the lake, looking at the stars, contemplating their difficulties, wondering what they're supposed to do now, wondering just where God was in all of this. Unbeknownst to them, Jesus was not far away. Upon returning to shore, a man is there who seems to know them and calls out, friends, don't you have any fish? Now, when I'm trying to do a thing and it turns out to not be very successful, I don't always like to be asked the obvious. Maybe you feel the same. Um, nope, not a, we don't have any fish. Thank you for your concern. Thank you for pointing out our failure. And then to have the same person who thinks he knows me say, hey, why not try fishing from the other side of the boat? I, I wonder if any of the disciples grumble. What difference does it make which side of the boat we throw the nets from? Just who is this guy? Maybe because their nets really were empty or they were tired or exasperated, fretful, but they heeded the voice on the beach. They threw their nets to the other side. And lo and behold, the miraculous happened, right? 153 fish fell into their nets. 153 fish, way more than necessary. So much fish. Enough fish to eat, enough fish to sell, and then some. An abundance of fish. The last time I preached on this passage, several of you joined me in creating this abundance of fish poster that is on our altar table today. When I first pulled out the butcher paper and got out the art supplies, I just really wasn't sure if we would fill the page because it's a pretty big piece of paper. Would there be enough people to help? Would people even want to decorate a fish or two? And lo and behold, we set the project out in Fellowship Hall and people got to it. An abundance of fish poster was born. It might be a simple thing, a fish poster, and yet it symbolizes trusting that a blank page can in fact become something, an empty canvas just waiting to be dreamed up, made better by more hands and more ideas and more imaginations. I don't think there's any two fish here that are quite the same. And you could say that the rummage sale and all its long hours and hard work is similar. We start with a garage jam full of random stuff that nearly the whole church plus some other guys from Malama Lama turn out and haul and lift and move. And then there is this week of setup, of organizing, of laughing at some of the donated items. And you guys who were there know what that, what that was. Of being church together in the mess. And then the pricing and finally the sale. Watching the production from my vantage point when I was in my office there working on this sermon. It's a miracle indeed. And then Ben shows up with lunch and says, come, eat. And we see how everyone together in that moment is the body of Christ. Priya Parker in her book, The Art of Gathering, talks about how any event, not just a party or a worship service, is a special gathering that begins with the initial invitation. Whether it's a Facebook post or a Zoom link, it begins with that initial invitation to the gathering. The disciples had no idea that their invitation to eat a beach breakfast would be right there waiting for them. And, you know, they didn't have social media, right? Which is probably a good thing because they probably would have been um, put on some watch list by the Roman government if there had been. But their invitation really began with that question. Haven't you any fish? 
and was realized when they were invited to sit by that fire and eat. For us, it's quickly complicated with all of our technology and how we invite, how we set the stage of how we welcome people in. And it's been made even more complicated by the pandemic. Some of us are kind of rusty on, on how to get together and, and, and you know, socialize and do all this stuff again. The masks get in the way, the, the just, you know, it gets awkward. So here we are. We have to deal with all of the awkwardness of things and we launch into the rummage sale anyway, because we needed to, because of all the stuff and because we needed to do this together. And so we did the invitation, right? We put it out on Facebook, on Instagram, on the B-Town blog. We have the banners out there. There was word of mouth. And we heard, I heard from some of the church members that people were reflecting back saying, you know, we've been waiting to attend the sale and we've been waiting for this day to arrive. And it's been a few years, you know, thanks to the pandemic. And when the people showed up, they were greeted by just smiling church folk. Tables were neatly stacked with items. Everything was priced out and ready to sell. Our community showed up. You know, and, and it's really, I want to say it's our retired community that showed up. Like people that, you know, are going to be really tired this week showed up to make last week possible. The rest, a lot of us, you know, we work today, 40, 50 somethings. So we've, we've got to show up for our jobs. We, we don't get to always be in the moment in the fellowship hall. So thank you. So our church community shows up and then this community at large shows up to shop, yes, but they're also in the showing up, coming to reminisce and tell stories and to reimagine what some of that brick brack might become somewhere else. I'm leaning into this rummage sale theme today because it's likely our last sale, at least in this format and this way of doing things, there might be a new way to reimagine it, never say never, right? But it's really important to make something look effortless, Priya Parker says in her book, In the Art of Gathering, and for that gathering to feel like a community event. It's got to have some sense of effortlessness about it, seemingly so. Though we know 100% there was so much effort in making sure this thing happened. But it was thoughtful, intentional effort that made it go. And for an event to go well, for the hospitality to feel genuine, the community gathering is never just thrown together, never ever. And we know this. There's always heart, hands, and thought in the process. To be in community, to feel a sense of community is not just happenstance. That God's spark within you is touched, that God's spark within me is touched, that spark is ignited in these moments and lives are touched. So what I'm saying is the rummage sale is not just a community event. It's not just a church event. It's in its own way, a sacred gathering. So from this abundance of the sale and from the monies raised, you know, it's going to go out to help other places in the world where there's a real need right now. And Nancy's going to talk about that. And, and that's the kind of that miracle of abundance that all of these little things coming together makes an possibility for another big thing to occur. And through this miracle of plenty on the beach, it becomes apparent to the disciples that this is Jesus here with them. He is the one standing on the beach. He is the one beckoning to them, asking them to sit down for a while. They've worked so long into the night. It is morning. There's fish and it is time for breakfast. So now y'all can the Sabbath is here for us this day. It's Jesus' third time showing up, of course, and they realize it is him. It's just the beloved disciple realizes it's him. And, you know, do they dare question like Thomas did? No, not this time. No, they're learning to trust this risen Christ. Jesus beckons to them to sit around a fire, to break bread, and to pick some fish to be enjoyed. A beach breakfast for everyone commences. What I love about this story is that 
Jesus in his resurrected state still wants to break bread and share a meal with his friends. He provides hospitality on that beach, a, a place of welcome, a place of rest and conviviality. The Last Supper is not in fact the Last Supper. The good news of Jesus um, being the bread and the cup continues on in the breaking of bread and the sharing of fish. Jesus shows us in this fourth gospel story that the Last Supper was not the final meal. The risen Christ continues to share in the table fellowship with his friends. And this is key. He's showing up to them, especially when it's a tender time, a key time for them to have the courage to become the church. Remember, these disciples would have been experiencing all the emotions, the sorrow, the fear, the desperation, the awe, the amazement, and the sadness again, each time they realized Jesus had returned to them, but just for a little while. They were trying to make sense of the chaos of what was happening and how they could move forward. And the fears of the Gospel of John would have been encouraged also in this Johannine community, um, these folks that would have known this gospel well by the retelling of the story, just as they, they're encouraged, you know, not to give up on being church together, just as we're encouraged not to give up on being church together. We must always assume that Jesus is in our midst, whether we trust or truly believe it or not. I'm going to quote some lines from a song. Kevin, choir people don't know it right away. Bread is broken, wine is poured, Christ is spoken and seen and heard. Jesus lived again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loaves abound. These words were published by Fred Kahn in 1975. And for me, these are some of the best words to capture the essence of our continued celebration of table fellowship with the risen one. Jesus offers us and the disciples in this post-resurrection meal, the strength and the nurture that we need in our daily lives. In the midst of our confusion, in the midst of our sorrow, in the midst of our labor, Jesus calls and feeds us. The food for us is the Eucharist, also known as communion. And the meal is a banquet in God's own kingdom. We are invited to share in God's abundance of too much fish, of too much rummage. Again and again, we are asked to trust in God's goodness and mercies. We are asked to have faith that the resurrected Jesus is available to us and wants to feed us during our regular days and during our hard days in the beautiful and messy days that we are given. Jesus feeds us so that we might feed others. Jesus walks with us so that we might accompany others. Jesus reminds us that when the bread is broken, the fish is shared, we become better, continuing to share what we have so there is enough for all. If this story reminds you of the feeding of the 5,000, well, yes, there are some echoes of that in here. And if this story reminds you of the communion story, like it reminds me of the communion story, well, yes, there are echoes of that here. And if this story reminds you that you can never underestimate Jesus, that the power of his grace and love is for us and is far beyond what we can imagine, well, yes, that's certainly here in this story as well. So may we go and do like, let us pray. Holy God of the miraculous catch of fish, let us accept your invitation into abundance, provision beyond what we have earned, grace beyond our expectations. Amen.
shared many of my thoughts on the rummage sale, so I'll get down to the bolts. But almost every person in this sanctuary today participated in the sale one way or another. And a big shout out to Lisa and Bill, who drove from Gig Harbor every day. And Lisa's heart is as big as this room. And she just works so hard, and she makes it a pleasant environment, and she's just, we just love her, and, and sorry that she doesn't join us anymore um, for being a distance away. And even Jane Armstrong came um, from Port Townsend area and spent two days here. So thank you, everyone. It was great fellowship and a lot of fun and a lot of work. Um, so we raised over $4,000, which we were very excited about. This year, the funds are going to Hurricane Relief Fund through the UCC and also to the International Rescue Committee that is um, taking care of immigrants coming into this country. Right now, they're working a lot with the Ukrainian folks that are coming. So we're just happy to be able to raise this money for them this year. And also throughout the sale, we have people and organizations coming in um, Towards the end of it, I pulled a lot of co women's coats and heavy sweaters for hospitality house. We had clothing and stuff going to Mary's place. Um, we collected some things at the end to take to Children's Bargain Boutique. So thank you for that. Um, Kirsten took some items over to a family that was transitioning from um, a shelter at Mary's place into a home. So we gathered some stuff for them to get started. They had absolutely nothing. And Kirsten drove to West Seattle and, and took those items. Um, a former church member came and there was a call out from Burian Cares for towels. So she came and collected towels and things. So those went out. Um, pregnancy aid in Des Moines came. We had so many baby clothes this year. One of our former ch church members donated a lot and um, they were able to get clothes and children's books to give to new families starting out that don't have much. Um, the Essential Items Bank that's in the Methodist Church in Des Moines, we took a lot of household items. Um, Alice is taking box rolls and I got some to take to them as well. There at the food bank, they set up a thing for people that are in need for just basic items. There were some teachers that came through shopping for their classrooms. So we just donated things to their classrooms. So they came for, you know, mostly books, stuffed animals and things like that. Um, and then at the end of the sale, a, a team from Christ Church came in um, and collected all of the clothing. They pack all the clothing up, they take it to Value Village and they get funds for it. And it goes to AIDS um, education in South Africa. So, so many things going on. And we also had people coming in and buying items. So someone bought things for Transform Burian. Um, a lady came in and got a bunch of books for prisoners in the jail. So just so much um, out into our community. And we're just so thankful for everyone's help. And like I said, a big thank you to, to Bill and Lisa on all of this. So. It's pretty amazing, really, when you put it all together, isn't it? Um, so we're going to turn our attention right now to our um, joys and concerns this morning. I'll start with looking at our prayer list here. First from Amanda. First up, I'd like to invite Susan forward. She's going to give us a moment. Permission since we're in officially in stewardship season and excuse me when I can't come up to the podium here. Um, so Amy had shared with me what she was going to be preaching about today, and I thought of two um, vivid memories that stand out for me in the last few years um, in relation to communion. And the first and and why and help explain why I continue to give. And the first would be from our mission, our Western Regional Youth Trip to Montana. And we had had a great week. We were exhausted and we were on our way home. And Veradel UCC 
and the Spokane Valley had offered their church for us to stay at. And um, the only the only room they had for us to sleep in though was in their sanctuary. So you can imagine 35 of us spread out in a sanctuary such as this, and we were tired. One of the kids had just found out their grandparent was dying. So we had sent some people home. The adults were just ready to be home and sleep. And at that moment, we realized it was time for communion. And um, we took out peanut butter sandwiches and grape juice and sat around and had the kids serve communion to each other. And it probably lasted about 20 minutes. But by the end of the time, everyone was weeping. Um, it was just really heartfelt to me because we'd had this week of big highs and low lows. Kevin can probably tell you, Anders can tell you from our trip to Mexico and to have that be the standout moment was really touching. Then this summer, um, we were at church camp and Matthias, my three-year-old, is pretty excited all the time. <laughs> and the last day we had communion, he comes running in. He knows that you take it together. And uh, the pastor offering the bread, offered him the plate. He took the biggest piece imaginable, <laughs> much to his mother's dismay. <laughs> And sure enough, dunked it in. And if you can imagine homemade bread dunked in juice come out, it's just dripping. <laughs> and um, Reverend Ryan Lambert looked at me and said, that's what this is about. <laughs> so in the car this morning, Matthias said to my mom, are we going to our church? And I said, oh, yes, we're going to our church. So please know that we continue to give to make moments like that happen. So the three-year-old who sees all of you knows this special place and that this is his church where we take communion. Thank you so much, Susan. Sure. You can right here, Andrews is fine. So, Anders, I'm going to just repeat back a little bit of what I heard from people on Zoom, because I don't know if they could hear you. Maybe even some of the folks in here might be a little bit um, have a hearing deficit. Um, so, you, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're good. I just wanted to recap since we're doing a hybrid worship style. So Anders has been a longtime member of this church. He's been living with Parkinson's for a long time. He's faced with this big decision of moving back to Sweden, where his dad is 92 years of age, but he has his adult children living in the LA area. 
and he's always considered this church his home church. And so I think um, if I get this right, Anders, you covet our prayers that we pray for you and with you as you're discerning your next right step and what you're going to do with your family here and your family back in Sweden and also taking care of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, you had surgery a week ago? Yeah, good, good, it went good. Thank you. All right. Well, we have some options. We can uh, jump into birthdays or we can do some more uh, announcements. Where do you guys want to go now? Mm -hmm. Announcements? Okay. All right, there. Yeah. This is our logo for um, our stewardship season right there from the UCC. And um, announcements. So I think the big announcements we've heard it all about the rummage sale. Lynn's got something it looks like to share. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> so um, the, the first one is um, that we're still taking um, people, uh, people, we still need people to come to the women's retreat. Uh, so I'm for uh, Stacey couldn't be here today. So there's um, handouts out back on the back table that you can uh, register online on the our website, there's a right on the front page, there's a, a place right down there that takes you right to the link. So you so there's um you can pay about any just like you're offering any way you want to pay. So we hope to see you there. So if you haven't registered, please do so because Stacy wants to start doing the main planning with the quantity of people. Um number two, Bible and Bruce is this coming Friday. So those who have never been, I really strongly encourage you to give it a try with Shannon and Amy teaming up. We get we we ask questions. You know, maybe someone else has the answer that you don't have, and we just toss things around and it's we really have a good time. And it's a very good learning, learning about and we dive into the, the verses and each word and what do you think they meant and why do you that happens. So it's it's if you haven't done it, please join us. It's on Zoom, so you don't have, you have to leave your house. So it's on Zoom. Um, I think that's it. Oh, and if there is, I'll tell you later. <laughs> Thank you. Just a quick reminder that the sign-up board is out in the narthex, and we can always use uh, lay leaders, greeters, um, et cetera, to help with our church services. So if you know you're going to be here on a Sunday and you want to bring flowers or whatever, please sign up on the board. Okay, well... I remember what number three was. So um, a number of people, we have a, a group of people that do teaching and helping. And if there's anyone out here that would like to give it a try, um, we'd really appreciate it. Just let me know. But if you want, to, uh, we have a safer church policy that you might see hanging around in various places. So if you do choose to work with the children, you, um, you need to fill out an application Real simple, put some references. We do a state patrol check on you. And it would really be great to have some new people that haven't done it yet or still call to do so. Thank you. This Friday coming up, uh, our Mission Mile race track is going to be down. And we're having a youth group event over there, too. I don't know what all is planned. Maybe we can develop that a little bit. But there are many families who keep coming back regularly. We don't know if they're going to join the church, but they certainly are aware that we're here. Yep. If you're not a Bible and Bruce, come on over. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So in conjunction with the uh, slot car racing, our youth have the opportunity to get together and kind of do some creativity night stuff. Um, and Shannon at 8 p.m. is good to Bibles and Bruce too. We'll be here in my office, and then Shannon will open up and uh, downstairs in the CE room. And there's a mural to work on, and just you know, people can kids, young people can bring other activities. Um, and that leads me to say, um, for 
um, All Saints Sunday. We're actually going to do it on the 30th of October this year. And we'll have the candles out in the narthex. I just kind of want you guys to start to visualize this. Um, and then we're also going to have an altar table uh, down here, an ofrenda um, from this in the style of Dia de los Muertos. And um, so we'll be I'm inviting you to think about like photographs of loved ones that have passed on in your life. It could be any time, you know, it could be your grandmother, it could be your great grandmother, it could be your spouse, um, it could be a, a sister or a best friend. Um, and just to bring those photos in and we're gonna just completely decorate this table and we'll have some of those activities going on in the um, women's retreat. There'd be a table for that. And I think we'll have our youth do some stuff for that table as well on, um, a night out also so get our creativity juices flowing <laughs> all right birthdays birthdays <laughs> uh, we wish a happy birthday this month to reed lynn jeff jim wendon kathy gloria mike derek sue and kathy so please join me in singing <laughs> Before you say anything else, Amy, the okay. second Sunday of October happens to be Pastor Appreciation Month. And as a gratitude from all of us for five and a half years here total, we have some gluten-free, everything-free cupcakes for you. Oh. So please accept these on behalf of all of us. So we're so grateful. <laughs> wow. Are these from Shambhala? Oh, thank you. So there's this great gluten-free um, bakery in Mount Vernon where Kevin lives, you know, so... An abundance of gluten-free, everything free cupcakes. Thank you so much. <laughs> and one more celebrating thing. Kevin has 1,500 hours <laughs> completed for flying as well. <laughs> I'm just going to put these over here for the moment. No? <laughs> well, for all of the abundance of all the things and all the ways that we give and share of our time, I think we've really talked about that a lot today. We will just sing our operatory response. so hard. May you rest. May you find some rejuvenation in the abundance of all the good things that God gives to us. And then may we know that all of the work that we have done, it multiplies and it multiplies and it multiplies. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. <laughs>